if you build a business, if you're a typical small business owner, you will make something like half of the money, or if you own an e-commerce business for six or five years or less, you'll make 60, 70% of all the money you ever make from the business. Hi, I'm Michael Vizi from Amazing FBA, and I'm the leader of the 10K Collective Mastermind for private label sellers and product brand owners who sell at least half a million dollars a year or more on Amazon. Over the last five years, we've had members triple their revenue in one year, grow to eight figures, and one member get to a seven figure exit. Hooray! Now we're taking it to the next level. I'm excited to introduce the 10K Collective Uber Mastermind. It's a unique combination of peer group support in person and online and specialist coaching. If you're ready to take your business to seven figures and beyond, just go to the Amazon Mastermind. Hey folks, Michael Vizi here from Amazing FBA. We are in the middle of quite an exciting, I think, overview of how we're going to buy our own e-commerce businesses if you want to, if you choose to. Now, the first step of the 10 steps is to decide, are you going to do this? It's not for everyone. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for those who have no stress proofing and are totally risk averse, just like buying a business similar to building a business, it involves risk, focus, and the willing to take calculated risks. But if you're up for it, exciting times, let's get going. Number two, step number two is to define what it is you're looking for. And in fact, that really needs to come in two parts. One is you and your personal wealth plan and where you want to get. And that out of that, we can come out with the number, the revenue size of the business. And of course, just looking for a business based only on the revenue is far too general. And so then the next part is to specify exactly what your target ideal business is or your business specification or target specification. So today we're going to deal with the personal wealth plan. We're looking at a financial result in a time frame, And then from that, we'll reverse engineer a bit of maths today to get to the size of the business that you should be shopping for. Now, the good news about the maths involved in buying a business you do need to be okay with maths. Most of it's fairly straightforward and you can get help from professionals. But we do a bit of maths. It doesn't lend itself to podcasts. If you're listening to this, I suggest that you get yourself over to the video version of the podcast. If you want to go over to amazingfba.com forward slash wealth plan, your personal wealth plan, you will see these numbers and you can download the slides or watch again on video. You'll find it a lot easier to follow. Numbers don't lend themselves to podcasts somehow. I try to keep the numbers as simple as possible. So I'm going to go over now to a presentation and get cracking with showing you that. So see which window this ends up being in. Okay. So here's my presentation window. So forgive me. This isn't super slick. I'm just trying to get the information across. So your personal wealth plan really consists of three things, three parts to it. You've got to buy a business, grow it, and then exit. Not much point, by the way, just to talk about this briefly, not a lot of point in buying a business for the sake of it. Yes. You can buy yourself an income stream. But the big money comes just like building a business without selling it. Not the best way to do it. Why is that? Because if you build a business, if you're a typical small business owner, you will make something like half of the money. Or if you own an e-commerce business for six or five years or less, you'll make 60, 70% of all the money you ever make from the business when you sell it. So that's where the big money is. That's the smart play. So don't buy a business to hold necessarily. The, the, the smart place to buy it to sell again, right? So if you, by the way, own a business already, you still need to think about grow and exit. You just don't need to think about the buying side of it, right? So it's important to have a big picture idea in place, a strategy before you even go shopping. So you're going to have three sets of numbers. So you're going to exit. We're going to reverse engineer from the exit, the outcome you want. Then you've got to think about growth. Very, very, very simple numbers for today. We'll get into more detail. And then you've got to think about buying the business, the numbers that come from that. There are only really three key numbers you need. Your personal exit numbers, what result do you want? The exit value is the most important to define. And by the way, I'm not in the business of advising people how to plan for retirement or for the next days of their life. You may wish to talk to an independent financial advisor and get some numbers to see what you should be aiming at in order to be able to retire or alternative to be able to sell your business and then grow an even bigger one if you wish to, or get into real estate or property investing, whatever it may be. You know, younger people in the 30s and 40s that exit businesses typically seem to start a new one quite quickly. I've noticed if you're older, then you might want to retire. Although I don't know many people who are actually happily retired 
from e-commerce. They seem to all want to be entrepreneurs. Anyway, that's your choice. So I'm going to leave that with you, but just to say you need to go and have some professional advice for what that number is, but that's outside the scope of what we're dealing with here. I am not a pensions advisor. So whatever that exit value is, let's say $4 million, maybe that enables you to pay off your mortgage, put a million dollars towards a, a finance, a, a stock portfolio for your retirement, and then go out and play again with a, a couple of million dollars in the bank to finance your next venture, whatever it may be, up to you. So the next thing is the exit multiple, i.e. how much you're going to pay, how much you're going to get paid times the profits. So $4 million implies that your business that you will own, that you will have bought, grown, and then be selling at this point in, say, three years' time, is worth, is doing $800,000 a year in profit. That's the business's profit, not your profit from the sale. Your profit from the sale is $4 million, just to be clear. You sell the business that is doing $800,000 for five times its profits. That is $4 million. I hope that makes sense. So just to summarize the numbers, the value at the exit is $4 million. If we divide the the value, that is how much you get paid in cold hard cash or some structured deal, by the multiple of five, you you arrive at what profit will that business that you own be doing at the exit? 800,000. Okay, so that's the key number you need to come out with. That's the key number which you need to come out with to take forward to the next stage. Next stage is the growth. So we're reverse engineering from where you want to be, right? In five years time, three years time. In this case, I think we said three years. You want to be selling this business for $4 million. Okay. And your business value in three years time will be 4 million and the profit will be 800,000. If we take that 800,000, we'll need to stick that on a piece of paper, keep that to one side and come back to it in a minute. The next question is how much you're going to grow the business. Let's say you aim to grow the revenue 50% over the time between you buying it and selling it. That is not an annual amount. That is the total amount over the course of time. So over three years, I don't know what the compound in annual growth uh, rate is there. It's going to be less than 20%. My maths is, is not good enough to do that kind of calculus in my head, but it's going to be pretty modest. So very doable, I would say. Margin expansion is an interesting concept. That's a, a, a phrase they use in private equity. It just basically means getting a bigger percentage of the profit. Right? So if you've got a badly run business, you buy and you can cut some overheads that are unnecessary, or you can make a higher uh, margin. So your cost of goods sold, you can make more efficient, you can get the percentage down. You can expand the margin, which is another way of adding amazing amount of value. But we're going to keep it at zero just to keep the math simple, right? So just to recap, growth numbers, revenue growth over the total time you own the business, in this case, three years, we're going to aim for 50%, margin expansion zero. Let's say you own it for three years. So just to summarize the growth numbers, you're going to aim to grow the business 50% over three years. You're not going to worry about changing the margin. And your time frame is going to be three years. So the key number out of this is the revenue growth, 50%. So we need to know from the previous bit of calculations, your business's profit when you sell it at the exit is going to be 800 grand a year. And the revenue growth is 50%. Now we take those two numbers together and we're going to figure out what size business we're shopping for. And businesses, when they're being sold, you're often, if you're looking for businesses, generally identify themselves with their revenue number, annual revenue, rather than value, because value is a very squishy number. So what are you shopping for? What we want to know is a revenue number for the type of business we're looking for now, right, with me. So you first of all, you need to work out what the profit of the business is going to be when you buy it. So the exit profit divided by the growth is going to give you that. So if you've grown your business 50%, it will start it will end that process with $800,000 per year of profit. And you will begin that process when you buy it at 533,000 a year in profit. That's one and a half times smaller. The profit margin when you buy it, let's assume that the profit margin that is for the business. Again, this is not your, you know, your, your margin in terms of being a business trader, you are the profit margin within the business is 15% of the revenue, right? And that's an industry standard profit, profit margin. You can ask uh, brokers, you can talk to other people if you want to get a sense of what is standard in your industry. If you're already buying in e-commerce business because you're in e-commerce, then you've done a smart thing and you already have a good sense for that. The target revenue when you buy the business, therefore, is the profit divided by the profit margin. So it's 533,000 profit a year divided by the 15% margin, which gives you a a size of business that you're shopping for of three and a half million dollars. 
if you're listening to this in a podcast and you've done that without seeing any numbers in front of you, you're doing really, really well. <laughs> but if you're finding it difficult to listen to as an audio podcast, then don't go and listen to it as a, a video, which is over at amazingfba.com forward slash wealth plan. I'll also put the slides there. So to summarize the buying numbers, the profit is 533,000 a year when you buy it, say in the next few months. The margin is 15%. That is to say the profit is 15% of the revenue of the business. And your target revenue, therefore, the sort of business you're looking for is three and a half million dollars. So in this particular instance, just to summarize everything, uh, you've got three sets of numbers. The personal exit numbers, the most important one is the business, business profit at exit. is 800,000. Well, the most important one of all is your personal money that you want to earn. Four million, that's the result. The business profit at exit, 800 grand. The revenue growth you're aiming at is 50% total across the time you own it, not per year. And therefore, the target revenue of the business when you buy it is $3.5 million. Now you know that, you are in a position to start shopping for a business. But of course, knowing how much money a business is turning over or even its profit is nothing like enough. That's a starting point. And then, of course, we need to define by a lot more factors to be precise before we can go shopping for your business. So that's what we're going to cover in, in the next video. If you found today's podcast challenging, that's because I'm packing quite a large amount of value into a small space, but I guess it's only value if you understand it. <laughs> so again, if you find an audio podcast a bit confusing, or even if you watch the video and find it a bit confusing and you want to go over this slowly and absorb it, go to amazingfba.com forward slash wealth plan, and you can download a copy of the slide deck as well there. Hope you have got your head around this. Next bit is good fun. We're going to decide what business we're going to go shopping for. I'm Michael Vizi from Amazing FBA, and I'm the leader of the 10K Collective Mastermind. Masterminds for private label sellers and product brand owners who sell at least half a million dollars a year or more on Amazon. Over the last five years, we've had members triple their revenue in one year, grow to eight figures, and one member get to a seven figure exit. Hooray! Now we're taking it to the next level. I'm excited to introduce the 10K Collective Uber Mastermind. It's a unique combination of peer group support in person and online and specialist coaching. We give you everything you need to grow your business to high seven figures and finally start to get that lifestyle you were promised when you went into this. You'll get clear plans from world-class specialists on things like intellectual property law, e-commerce, image and video marketing, financial engineering, and paid advertising, to name but a few. You'll create bulletproof plans to survive the recession. You'll double check with your peers that they make sense. And then you'll make a plan to make a killing on the rebound. Most importantly, you will actually transform your business. You'll create listings that convert, build a brand that connects, and get premium pricing. You'll learn the latest advertising hacks and master stock management, as well as avoiding Amazon curveballs. Above all, you will create a big, bold three-year plan for a seven-figure exit. And unlike other programs, we don't just hype you up and then abandon you. You'll have your peers in the mastermind giving you insights from their own businesses and keeping you on track through peer accountability and a little bit of friendly competition and we'll also have those experts double checking everything you do makes actual sense. If you finally want to start becoming the entrepreneur you've always known you can be, if you're ready to take your business to seven figures and beyond, go to theamazonmastermind.com to find out more today.